Six max settings you need to turn off now. Increase battery life, improve personal privacy. Let's get into it. Let's open up system preferences. Let's get into it. All right, system preferences. Apple menu, upper left-hand corner of the screen. Click on that. Scroll down to system preferences and click on that. So let's click on security and privacy. Then just make sure you're in that privacy tab. Click on privacy. All right, yep. Yeah, you got four tabs at the top. You got general, file vault, firewall, privacy. Once we're in privacy, go to location services. Hey, you're already there. So click that lock. We need to unlock to make some changes here. No, okay, so click the lock to make changes. I'll click the lock. You can either use Touch ID if you've got that set up or you can enter your password. I have Touch ID set up. I'll use that. Great, and this look through this list of apps and ask yourself, does this app need access to my location? A lot of the time, the answer is going to be no. However, weather, for instance, is gonna need your location to deliver you weather where you live. Waves Central. Does Waves need to know, which is an audio plugin, where I am? No. no. Auto Editor. This is a Final Cut Pro auto editing software. No. I have no idea why yeah. they would need my location except to collect data about me. The other thing here is that all of these are battery drainers. Mm -hmm. Visual Studio Code, I think not. I'm not programming any applications that use location. Look through this list of apps, and you might be surprised by some of the things that you see in here. You might not have even known that they were yeah, I don't, accessing your location. Skype doesn't need to know where I am. So once you've gone through that, click on Details next to System Services at the very bottom of the screen. We're gonna turn off the unnecessary system services. So let's turn off location-based alerts location-based suggestions, oh dear. time zone and system customization. I mean, if you're not traveling through time zones a lot, not super important, you can always come back in here too and just turn it back on if you take a flight to a different time zone. System customization. Does this mean that like I change a setting and what, what is this actually doing? Well, in different countries, different things like Wi-Fi networks are configured slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So if you're traveling to a different country, turn this on like David just said. Yep. If you're not, it's not gonna make a difference if you're in New York or Massachusetts. Right. It's the same. Yep, significant locations, go ahead and turn that right off. This used to be called frequent locations and Apple said, hey, that sounds really creepy, so. Let's change the name. Let's change the it's name. It's like Time Warner Cable. Yep. They said, oh, we stink, let's make it Spectrum. Find my Mac, you're gonna to wanna to leave that one on. And if you have Apple Care Plus for your Mac and you lose it and you wanna file a claim for a loss, you need to have Find My Mac turned on, otherwise they're just out of luck. We got that tip from Larry Nicholson, our Super David member. Yep, he's if a wanna, channel member. If you wanna join Larry, click that join button down below. Get access to a bunch of great perks. Yeah, Larry's a Super David. You don't have to go that deep. Mm -hmm. You, if you want to become a super David, we'll have you on a live stream with yes. us. How cool is that? Anyway, we just got Larry to a thousand subscribers. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Speaking of a thousand subscribers, we're trying to get to a thousand times a thousand subscribers. There you go. That's a million. That's a million. We're almost there. If you could hit that subscribe button for us, it would not only help us, it would help people all over the world to find us. Back to the Mac settings, HomeKit. We're leaving that on, turning it off. I am turning it off because I don't use the HomeKit settings. Like mm -hmm. if I leave home, do this. Right. I do it a different way. Yep. Yeah. Networking and wireless? No. 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 Click done at the bottom of the screen. Okay. And now on the left here, let's look at photos, camera, microphone. We want to restrict which apps on your Mac actually have access to these things. A lot of apps don't need access to your camera and microphone all the time. Right, and your photos. And so your photos, photos is first. Does terminal need full access to my photos? Probably not. If you don't recognize anything, this looks like Daisy Disk. Mm -hmm. Let's say you installed some piece of software four years ago. Mm -hmm. You don't remember what it is, but does it really need full access to your photos? Probably not. Mm -mm. Go one by one, just ask yourself, does it need access to my photos? Let's go one below that to camera. Camera on the left-hand side. Do these apps need access to my camera? Blue Jeans, sort Blue of the, jeans. the Facebook alternative to Skype. Right. Ecamm Live, I have no idea what that is or where it came from. So we should say though, like an app like Zoom is going to need access to your camera if you want to show up on camera during a Zoom call. So. It's not like we're saying turn it off for everything. We're not crazy, but just be selective about which apps can actually use your camera. Because otherwise the app can just be using your camera. Right. You should see the green light at the top. You should. But you shouldn't have to put tape over it like so many people did I know. in the Apple Store. Let's go down. One below that is microphone. Okay, here we are. Adobe Premiere Rush, that's a video software. We're gonna let that continue to use microphone. But again, Ecamm, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. 
Isotope RX8, GoToMeeting, Microsoft Teams, OBS, Skype. Yeah, I mean, Skype on our app, it's going to need access to your microphone if you want to do a Skype call with someone and you want them to be able to hear you, it's going to need access to your microphone. Be careful of apps that you don't recognize. Those are the ones to uncheck. After microphone, scroll down to input monitoring. Sounds innocuous. Sounds innocuous. Is it? No. Well, sort of. Allow the apps below to monitor input from your keyboard even while using other apps. So all the time they can be checking out my keystrokes. That's weird. Do you want Discord monitoring all your keystrokes on your Mac? Certainly Probably not. not. Not doing that. So I unchecked that apparently. Yep. A while ago. Smart. One below input monitoring full disk access. Why should people restrict access to the full disk? Because allow the apps below to access data like mail messages, Safari, home, time machine backups. So like literally every file on the computer. <laughs> Uh, we don't want that because right. not only for privacy, but really it can, if you've got an app that's old, it can screw up your whole computer too. Sure. It's too much access. A lot of times you'll see these sort of weird looking things like com.adobe. This is called, I forget what it's called, like reverse domain name, com.adobe.acc, the creative cloud installer. I'm going to leave that checked because I sort of recognize it, but anything that you don't recognize, you should just uncheck. And then if you're having a problem, just come back in here and mm -hmm. turn it back on again. But a lot of things like, for instance, Isotope product portal, this is an app installer mm -hmm. that I need, but it doesn't need full disk access. Let's keep scrolling down below full disk access. We're going to go down to Apple advertising. Okay. Well, all the way to the bottom, Apple advertising. So personalized ads, uncheck that box. People, we get a lot of pushback on this. They say, I want to see personalized ads. I don't want low quality ads, but websites can still deliver you contextual ads based on what you're reading. If you're on an iPhone help website or a Mac help website, you're going to see, you know, Mac repair ads or buy a new computer. And one above Apple advertising is analytics and improvements. Let's click on that. So just uncheck all of these boxes. A little yeah. bit of a battery tip here for you. Save some battery life. It's uh, it's good. Yep. Help Apple improve. Yeah, I don't even think you have to uncheck all of them, David, because you can go boom, top one and the bottom one turns wow. off at once. So if you turn off share Mac and then improve Siri and dictation, no thanks. Save the whole click. For more great tips like how to save one click when you're going through system preferences on your Mac, subscribe to this channel. Click that big red subscribe button below the video. Yeah, do that, please. Even if you appreciate the fact that you just saved one click, yep. maybe you're grateful for grateful. every click that you save. Maybe clicks add up, dude. They do add up. They do. Those are some Mac settings you need to turn off now. Thanks for watching. Checking out my keystrokes. That's weird. Yeah. It's weird. So do you want Discord checking out your, your keystrokes? My D-strokes? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely I'm not. Having a, I'm having a D-stroke. <laughs> do you want Discord?